of God. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transform. How? By the renewing of your mind. Today, I want to preach from the subject, renew your mind. Somebody say, renew your mind. Now tell somebody else. Look at somebody around you that looks favorable to you and say, renew your mind. Now, I know this is a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, we're praying for Sister Juanita. What was on my mind? Um, she's down in Texas visiting with her son, um, Brother Mark Hurdle Jr. If they're watching, we're praying for you, Brother Mark Hurdle Jr. We're praying for Pastor Mark Hurdle Sr. We're praying for Sister Juanita Lindsay. We're yet praying for Sister Renee and Sister Juanita who've had death in their families. And we're praying for Deacon Lindsay. Amen? Amen. Just want to say that while I was on my mind. All right. Uh, renew your mind. Now, I'm going to go a little different than what you may have heard me talk uh, out of these chapters. Because out, out of this particular chapter, automatically, when you say, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When you talk about, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. This automatically comes off and sounds as a holiness message. And rightly so. Somebody say rightly so. But God has given me a different twist. Not that that is not still the same, but he's enlarging upon it uh, and expanding our thoughts. I was standing in Detroit, Michigan, and as I was standing there, the Holy Spirit whispered in my ear, preach, renew your mind. And I just heard renew your mind, preach, renew your mind, and then immediately uh, the, the scripture came to me and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Immediately, God it's amazing when you flow with God in the spirit, a lot of time information just comes rapidly and it's, it's, it's like all of a sudden you just know. All right. You'll find that out as you go on with God. And so all of a sudden. It came back to me, a meme I put up some years ago of a very well-known man, and under, the, under his picture was the caption, Sister Kadrina, was the caption, uh, unlearn, learn, and relearn. All right, all right, Sister Jenkins, I'm going to talk to Sister Jenkins and let everybody else eavesdrop. Unlearn, learn, and relearn. All right, can we say it all together now in class? Now that you got it, let me say, unlearn, learn, and relearn. Even the children were saying it with us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And that's what we're going to have to do in this hour. We're going to have to, Deacon Cooper, we're going to have to unlearn. Matter of fact, Deacon Cooper was part of the inspiration as I was listening to God. Deacon Cooper came back to my mind because uh, we had went out for breakfast and Deacon Cooper said, Bishop, you, you, you teaching us something different than I've ever heard before. And I know you're right because this is how we were taught. But what you're saying now m makes more sense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means you have to unlearn. All right. So some of some of us, our, our greatest challenge is we've been taught one way. So we only know how to operate one way. And therefore, when God tries to move in a different way, we're resistant because all we know is the one way. So this is an hour that you're going to have to have dexterity and be flexible and be able to be pliable and mendable and be able to shift and to change in order to meet the demands of today. All right, let me give it to you this way. Let me give it to you this way. Uh, before even some of you all were even born, some of our younger people, uh, uh, a lot of our younger people, amen, in the early 90s, we had, we had uh, uh, a, a war, amen, in the Middle East. We had, uh, uh, in, a matter of fact, I, was, I think I was a junior or a senior in high school, amen, when we had the initial war in the Middle East. And, and we won that war, and then several years later, we had to go back to the Middle East and fight all over again. Now, same people, same fight, but, but there was a different strategy and updated equipment that was used to have a more seamless uh, form of attack that had less casualties. 
They, they, they didn't go back into the region with the old plan. They didn't go back into the region with the old equipment. They went back into the region with a new plan and with updated equipment, which means that you have to unlearn, yes, yes. learn, and then you got to relearn. You, you, you need continued education. All right, I'm going somewhere with this. And so, so, and so for, for what the Holy Spirit whispered in my ear, he said, unlearn, learn, relearn. Then immediately he brought back to me a book that I'm reading. I, I, I'm back reading. I read it some time ago. And uh, I don't know, it's in one of my boxes. But for the sake of time, I, I went on and downloaded it to my phone. And the name of that book is What Got You Here Won't Get You There. Some of y'all, y'all going to have to go back and watch this all over again. Amen. Because there's a whole lot going on at one time. And it's hard for some of y'all to digest because you're just so enamored with the way things are. What, what Bishop talking about? I got to unlearn. See, you already stuck before we can get the message going. Uh, I ain't got time to be unlearning nothing. I'm, I got to go as it is. See, see, you ain't going nowhere. Amen. You at the bus stop and still not moving. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so, so, so what got you here? So a lot of people are, are, are forever stuck because we're trying to go to the next level off of principles that got you to the current level but won't work for what's next in your life. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back around. I'm giving you snippets along the way. We're going to come back around to it. So watch this. So for, for my note takers, let's, let's just jump in and plow in. Number one, because let me preface it by saying this. God gave me renew your mind because you're right outside of your miracle. You are right outside of your wildest dreams happening to you. You're one moment away, one opportunity away, one, one praise away, one day away from everything making sense, everything coming into alignment. This is the precursor. This is the litmus test. Can you unlearn, learn, and relearn? Can you shift with God? Can you be pliable? Can you adjust? Now watch this. Here's point number one. In order to go to the next dimension or the next level, watch this. Number one is transformation is necessary. Somebody say transformation is necessary. He says, and be not conformed to this world. Conformed means fashioned, molded, patterned after. Be not patterned after this world. Be not molded after this world. Be not fashioned after this world. Now, this world is dealing with the systems of this world. The things that pertain to man. The things under the heavens. Got it? But guess what? Can we enlarge upon it? Not to discredit the scripture or to do damage to the scripture in any kind of way. There, there are some people... We just, we just, we stand within the system. There are some people that have been a pattern that we got to divorce ourselves from. And it may be family. It, it may be your favorite preacher. It may be your favorite deacon, your favorite missionary, your favorite auntie. We don't need bad models in this season. And when I'm, when I talk about bad models, I'm not saying that the person themselves are bad, but, but the, their blueprint may be faulty for where God is trying to take you. Elder, Elder you preaching better than I'm saying amen. It doesn't apply. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't apply. Mama and them, wonderful, love them. Grandparents who got thank God for good grandparents, but but sometimes they say things because of their heart towards you, but is not founded upon what's good for the times. Um, can, can I get to tell you something? This true testimony. Now, some of y'all y'all gonna y'all gonna laugh because y'all know my mama. Amen. Amen. I remember one time I had a conversation with my mama and I said, Mama, listen, you're not listening to me. She said, no, you're not listening to me. 
<laughs> and I said, hold it, hold it, mama. I said, mama, I hear you. I hear your heart. You're speaking to me as a mother and you want what's best for me. But what you're telling me don't apply. <laughs> Almost got a backhand smack. <laughs> <laughs> Elder Jerry, he knew my mama. He said, I was bold. I was bold. I said, Mama, that, that, that doesn't apply. Boy, she whipped me upside down with words. But she came back and apologized later because later on, over time, she saw what I was saying. And, 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 and I, but I had the wisdom to know that's good. It's coming from a good place. All right. All right. Let me give you a better example. Let me give you a better example to prove my point. Jesus tells, I'm going to talk to Bishop and, and Brother Clemens here, Minister Clemens, and let everybody else eavesdrop. Amen. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to die. I got to go to Jerusalem. They going to kill me. Peter rose up. Didi rose up. I mean, Minister Evangelist Didi rose up. <laughs> MK got up. I'm trying to find all my Peters. Evangelist Jill Thompson not here today. Who? Who you? Cross. Kenya. All right, the whole back row. All the, all the, and it said, be it far from thee, Jesus. He said, I'm your boy. I'm not going to let nobody roll up on you and kill you. What are you talking about? Be crucified. Amen. And then Jesus turns to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savors those things which be of man and not that which is of God. Peter was well-intentioned. Peter's heart was tended to towards Christ. You my boy. And you my rabbi. <laughs> you my friend. And you my savior. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? But Jesus understood, for this cause came I into the world. Everybody don't understand your assignment, not even always your family. They can be well-intentioned, but that doesn't mean that they understand your assignment. They can love you unconditionally, but that doesn't mean that they understand your assignment. This is, this is why you have to be clear on your assignment so that nobody else can try to interpret for you your assignment and then get you confused and get you off. All right. So 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 there are some patterns that we have followed that that may not be the best for us in totality. There may be some things you can take out of it, glean from it. And so let me use these things. You got to learn how to eat the meat and spit out the bones, the, discard the bones. But everybody don't know how to do that. Some people, they got the meat and the bones and then they choke him. <laughs> and the bone is caught up in the throat and everything It's because you weren't supposed to take all of that in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? All right, so let's, let's get back. Let's get back to it. So, so transformation is necessary for where you're going next. Some of us, the reason why it hasn't happened for us yet is because we're trying to go to the next level as is. And God said, your grace for that aspect of you runs out with this level. The, the next level is going to require a more focused you, a more disciplined you, a more consistent you, a more liberal you, a more forgiving you, a more loving you, a more objective you, a more opened you. I can go on and on, but my time is running out here. Uh, that, 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 that's going to be a requirement. If you're going to really get all that God has for you, you're going to have to, you're going to have to elevate. You're going to have to upgrade. You're going to have to step up. Well, how do I do that? Number two, number one is transformation is necessary. Number two is Transformation comes by the renewing of our mind. You got to renew your mind. What does it mean to renew? To make new again. Which means you got to get rid of stinking thinking. 
I know this ain't kind of message many of you might have been looking for, but I'm trying to give you a practical. I always tell you, if it's not practical, it's not spiritual. You got to get rid of stinking thinking. The reason some of you, you're sitting here right now and you're saying, I know I'm supposed to be wealthy. I'm supposed to have money. I'm not supposed to be right where I am. There's a barrier. and, And some of you, the barrier is not spiritual warfare. The barrier is mentality. You haven't gone the mentality needed for God to dump everything that your spirit man is saying that God wants to do for you. You're absolutely correct. God wants to blow your mind. He wants to bless your going out. He wants to bless your coming in. But if you, you, if you, if you're looking for wealth and you can't balance a checkbook, you, you're looking for wealth and opportunity. But, 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 but you have a consumer mindset and not an investor mindset. You, you, you got to have all the latest stuff and, and, and all your bills are late. You name brand out, but you're behind on everything. You putting the cart before the horse. It's not that God don't want you to have nice things. You can have nice things, but you have to have a discipline about yourself and you have to have an order about yourself and you got to learn how to not be saved and a prodigal. See, when we think of the prodigal, we only think of the prodigal from the standpoint that he left his father's house. And we think prodigal means backslide. We think prodigal means go away. We think prodigal means to go out and club. And the word prodigal means waster. Which means you can stay in the home and still be a prodigal. You don't have to leave and be a prodigal. You can stay and just be a waster. Waster of time. Waster of talent, gift, and skill. Wasteful of opportunities. Wasteful of of, of platforms and moments. Wasteful of resources. That's that's what makes you a prodigal. And so sometimes we're looking at the person that left out. Hey Amen. No, no, you the one. You a prodigal, and you're right here. You're at church every week. You you're living in your mother and your father's house, and you're a prodigal. How do you live in your mother and father's house? Since we have such a great deal of young people, how do you live in your mother and father's house and be broke? My sister not here to bear witness, but you can ask her when she come back. Amen. My sister had a canny sense of where my stashes were. Because when I was a child, I, I spent big. I spent big. I spent big. I, I'm not going to lie. Amen. But I also saved. So I'm going to tell you now where my stashes were because I, don't, I, I had to upgrade. <laughs> Too many people in the house. Amen. Had to reconfigurate my situation. Amen. But back back then, I had money in my in my in my top drawer, in some socks, and I had money under my mattress. And then I had don't don't tell don't tell this is the MK you know at KJ around here he gonna he gonna run to <laughs> KJ is like I hit the jackpot. <laughs> Hey, man, I had, had money in my closet in a, in a shoebox. All right. And so my sister, instead of going to the bank, she would go to my stash and make a loan. <laughs> because at an early age, see, my mother taught both of us what her mother taught her. I'm about to help somebody out. Whenever you get a big bill, save it. You get a $100 bill, my mother was an avid saver of $100 bills. And she said, my mother told me, which her mother was Vivian Frazier Green, she said, my mother told me, once you break 100, it's gone. You can be sitting there trying to find, where did my money, I just, I just had 100, why, why, why am I stuck with $7.13? One trip to Walmart, one trip to Target, then wiped you out. <laughs> but Clemson said, I got a witness. And so we learned how to start saving money. That if somebody gave us a hundred dollar bill, we didn't touch it. We'll spend everything else, but we won't spend that hundred dollar bill. And that was the beginning of us learning how to save. I'm helping somebody. Y'all, y'all need to. 
Yeah. Yeah. Somebody need to get up and give me a no, I'm just <laughs> All right. All right. So 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 you got you. Many of us, again, are wasters. And therefore, we're not advancing. We're hopeful, but we're not moving in faith. What do you mean hopeful, but not moving in faith? See, hopeful is when you got a wish list. But when you in faith, how many of you know that faith without works? Somebody know what I'm talking about. See, see, faith is going to re- not just require something out of God, but it's going to require something out of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a whole lot of people, they stuck at hope and have not moved into faith. You, you're hoping to advance. You are hoping to go to the next level. You are hoping to get rich. But what are you doing in faith? All right, can we get it to you this way? Faith begins where the will of the Lord is revealed. So you just can't arbitrarily just faith it. You just can't make up something in your mind and say, okay, I'm going to just believe God for it. Well, God ain't said nothing about that. God is not obligated to hold up your wish list. God is obligated to hold up his word. I I just helped somebody out right there because we've been taught, just have faith. And you have people come to you and say, Capri, just have faith. Well, I can't have faith if God didn't promise it. If God did not say it, what am I faithing? Faith begins where the will of the Lord is revealed. So if you know that it's the will of the Lord for you to have millions, now God, what is the blueprint to get there? So that I can start walking it out. And as I take one step, you're going to take two. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I can trust you to be with me on a journey that you've already prescribed for me. But because we don't know the will of the Lord for our own lives, we sit there trying to figure it out. You're doing the, you're doing the double dutch. You're trying to, do I get in? Do I, do I, I, don't, I don't know whether to get in or get out now. Then you jump in and you get all tripped up because that wasn't the will for you. you. You didn't need to do double dutch. God wanted you to do the single rope, jump rope. Double dutch is too complicated for you. Is this happening to anybody? So, so you got to know what the will of the Lord is and then move in that direction so that you won't be a prodigal with time. Because somebody in here is a prodigal with time because you're in a whole other area that God ain't even ordained for you to be in. Because you're trying to do and mimic somebody else's success. Well, let me get out here and write a book. Well, you don't even know English. What, 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 are, you, what are you writing the book for? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't do an audio book. <laughs> but Ebonics won't sell. <laughs> I'm going to be a chef. I want to be a chef. You, you don't even know how to measure out. I, I don't want your food because you got the measuring cup and everything out. That means you you still a novice. I can't get anybody to know what I'm talking about. See, the real cooks, they, they, they don't have, let me see, this is the teaspoon, tablespoon. See, you still trying to figure it out. The real cooks, they just out there shucking it out and I can't get nobody to talk to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a bishop. Bishop, don't you want something? No, I don't want that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm, I, my dad dead and gone now. I'm going to do you like my daddy used to do to the saints. He said, see, Karen, no. Karen. I hope he didn't do that to you, Karen. <laughs> Karen, no. Hey, hey, man, my daddy used to tell the saints they were always giving food, everything, and they come back next Sunday. Pastor, how did their food? He said, hit the spot. <laughs> yeah, never told him what the spot was. And that thing didn't even make it in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody want to be Chef Bardee. No, no, that ain't, that's not your anointing. Go back and come again. <laughs> all right, all right, let's move, move on. So, so, so we got to upgrade our lives. We got to upgrade. I'm just speaking pastorally. I'm just speaking, I know this ain't the three point. This is not theologically, you know, how we supposed to do this, but I'm just trying to help my parishioners out, amen, to help us advance our life because what got you here is not going to be what is necessary to get you to the next level. I hope Sister Kia don't, don't mind me using her as an example. 
and she, she waved me on. Amen. She's moving in faith. Amen. Praise God. Or at least hope. <laughs> she's, she's hoping that Bishop, Bishop's not going to make me look bad. All right. When I started <laughs> with Sister Kia, well, Celia, Celia, you what, 23? All right. So, I, so Kia been cutting my hair. Sister Kia been cutting my hair for 24 years. 24 years. Now, this is not about that, but when I started out with Sister Kia, I was paying $15. I think for... I think once I hit 25 years next year, I need a special discount. <laughs> she got to give me a watch. <laughs> 25 year customer. <laughs> Kid was killing the game at $15. But she understood that she needed to upgrade. So one day, my father, in his conversation, because she used to cut my father's hair as well, as a matter of fact, that's how I got the kid. She was doing my father's hair first, and my, my barber had to go into witness protection program. <laughs> this message is not going right today. <laughs> We're not going to air this later on. We just, whoever didn't see it live. <laughs> Minister Clemens, it was his name. What's his name? He's out now. He's out now. He's a bishop in the Lord's church now. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and, and that was only because his brother got shot in the, in the face at, at gunpoint range. And he knew the shooter. And everybody in the family had to go off the scene for a little while until that case was taken care of. All right. And so... So I needed, I needed a, a barber, and so my dad said, come check out my barber. Long story short, she upgraded because my father, myself, and a few other customers, we didn't like the old way. Let me look at my time. All right. We didn't like the old way, which was the current way at that time and still the current way in many barbershops of you come in and be like, who's next? And where are you? And then you try to find your placement, and you go to the barbershop to get a haircut, and then you in there five hours. So we said, kid, if you do appointments, we'll give you more money because we want to get in and out. And if you, I, I will pay you an extra five, ten dollars more to go to an appointment based situation. And she heard the several of us that, that suggested that and went to appointment based. And so now we was paying twenty five dollars. All right. But that, but that wasn't getting her to her go. <laughs> she had to do too many heads to get where she felt comfortable. But at every level, she upgraded herself. So we went from just getting haircuts to now we're getting shampoos. We went from just getting shampoos to people start getting facials. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? She started throwing in extra products and said, try this product out. I'm not going to ask. Now, I'm not going to tell y'all how much she's charging me now. <laughs> but she came to understand within her field that if I want to get to another level, I can't keep doing the same thing looking for a different result. That's called Insanity. You crazy to keep doing the same thing the same way and you expecting a different outcome. So she had to diversify her skill set and what she was bringing to the table for her clients. I'm just trying to help somebody out because you, you want better, but you're not willing to do better. All right. All right. Let me let me bring this back in. All right. Now, this is applicable. I'm going to talk to Deacon uh, 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 Pemberton here and let everybody else eavesdrop. This is applicable in every area of life. In your faith, you got to renew your mind. All right. Can I part right there? Because I got some religious people that are watching and I got some religious people that are in the room. 
Because there are a lot of people can't go to the next level with God because they're stuck where God was and not where God is. We, we, we so busy enamored with how God moved in the past and everybody's spending all their time looking back because you know when Mother McLaughlin was here, you know when Mother Rivers was here, you know, you know when Mother Lee Powell was here, you remember when Bishop Samuel Green was here, it was wonderful. We thank God for Bishop Samuel Green. God knows I do. I wouldn't be here without him. We thank God for Bishop Barnett Thurgood. We thank God for Apostle Clarence Sellers. We thank God for Apostle Norby Sellers. But guess what? That day is over. And you'll never embrace what is today if you're holding on to yesterday. All right. Let's look at the evolution of God. God moved dispensationally. God moved how? Dispensationally. You need to thank God God moved dispensationally. Why? You know why? Because if some of us was living back then, we'd be dead on arrival. Disobedient children got stoned to death. Y'all not hearing one. Anybody want to go back? Y'all want to go back now? Let's, let's go back to the old landmark. Come on, come on. You sitting in here in church, you can't, some of y'all came to church high before. You came to church drunk and inebriated before. You came to church smelling like y'all, smelling like sex before. And you came in, you got a blessing and you walked out. You came to church after having cursed somebody out. And God let you come in and let you live. Because in the Old Testament, you would have died coming through the threshold. But because we're in the grace dispensation, God is long suffering and He's slow to anger and He's plenteous in mercy. My God, thank you. We would have been wiped out for adultery, fornication, witchcraft, Ouija boards, psychics, everybody that you've entertained for being drunk. Y'all know what I'm for lying. A liar won't tarry in his sight. You keep showing up every Sunday. I'm trying to hurry up. My time is running out. So, so watch this. So you got to be where God was. I mean, where God is and not where God was. Cause back when we was coming up in church, we couldn't do this. That This is not that day. This, this is not that day. And you have to accept that this is not that day. I can't believe that they don't go to church every day of the week. Well, y'all don't have nothing to do back then. Everybody want to hold to how I can't believe how these young people coming up because when I came up in church on Monday, it was upper room and on Tuesday, it was prayer and Bible band and on Wednesday, it was choir rehearsal and on Thursday, it was play rehearsal and on Friday, it was pastoral Bible study and on Saturday, it was choir rehearsal again and on Sunday, we had three services and everybody get on social media and go in. Yeah, we went to church every day, all day and you still came out of heathen. You still came out a twofold child of hell. You, you're not no seraphim and no cherubim walking around here. Back in the day, the glory would come in and people would get here. Well, where's your healing ministry? See, the people ain't anointed today like how we got it. Well, when did you cast out a devil? You keep telling somebody else's testimony. What's your testimony? Uh, tell me about what you did for the Lord. Don't keep telling me what they did for the Lord. We know Bishop Thurgood was anointed. We know Apostle Sellers was anointed. We know Bishop Green was anointed. Where was your anointing back then? Where's your anointing now? These young people, they don't know how good they got it. Some of these young people know more Bible than you. You've been in YPWW, Sunday School, YWCC. All right, I got to hurry up. So watch this. All right, I'm hurry up. This. So Jesus told his disciples, y'all heard it, y'all read it, some of you. He said, you've heard it before, but I say unto you. Anybody ever read that in the Bible? He said, you, you heard it before this way, but I say unto you. In other words, he's saying, I'm showing you a more excellent way. I'm not discarding how they did it back then, but this is a new day I'm introducing. 
and some church people are merely religious, and so they're stuck in their religiosity. They know protocol. They 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 they, they know the church liturgy. They they know they know they know the litany of the church. They know they know all the things that is church, but they don't know Christ. And so when you start functioning outside of their religion, then they feel like that you don't got it because you don't have it the way they had it. But, 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 but you got to understand that I don't have to have it the way you had it. I just need to have him. <laughs> See, many people got it, but they don't have him. All right, I got to move on. All right, so some of us, we got to upgrade in how we do things in our relationship with God. Because he led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And whenever the cloud moved and whenever the fire moved, they had to get up and they had to move with God. Somebody said, move with God. Move with God. All right, I'm moving on. I'm closing, I'm closing out my message here. Uh, some of you, you got to adjust in how you operate in your family. This is a whole different day. There are more blended family than the normal family construct. How many of you in here are part of a blended family context right now, whether it's you the child or whether you the parent? See, look at how many hands. This is the majority of the church. Either they are the parent of a blended family or they are the product of a blended family. So, so you, have to, you have to adjust because, see, a lot of people are going to tear up their family over the blended family. Because that's <laughs> what they say. <laughs> Not in my, that's right. That's right. Not in my house. Amen. Because there are a lot of parents that can't get along because that's my child. No, when we got married, they became our child. You can't say nothing to my child. What did you marry me for? Right. <laughs> don't, 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 what do you mean? I can't say nothing to your child and we marry. And they stand in our house. Said it. Before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Now, that's not my situation. I, I can say whatever I want to Lauren, Noah, DJ, Jess. DJ, how you doing? Amen. God bless you. So you got to readjust how you do your family. Suited for the times, because guess what? Women are not like what they were back in the day. You, you, all that macho, macho man stuff you got going on. You, you, all these male chauvinist ideals. W women are more educated now than men. On many, thank you, Pastor Sam. On many levels, they got the degree and the street smarts. And you said, I'm the man, I'm the man. Like my father used to always say, if you got to keep saying that you're the man, you, you're not much of a man. Your presence ought to give off who you are. You don't have to say, I'm the man, you got to bow down, you got to respect me. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's not how you do it. No. You, 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 you focus on being who you're supposed to be in the context of the relationship and the honor will come to you. The support will come to you. I'm a good man. I didn't wake up this morning. Lord, get in that kitchen. Fix me some eggs and ham, Sam I am. I'm closing this message out. I woke up and bacon was in the air. All right, all right here we go. I'm just running through this list real quick, and, I, and I'm done. I know it's been practical and everything, but I hope you're hearing me. Financially, God is getting ready to dump it on you, but are you ready to handle it? Somebody say, increase my capacity. Because, see, we want God to spoil us. And that's what money going to do to some of us is spoil us. Because if it's dumped on you and you can't handle it, it's going to ruin you. So the hold up is now I'm waiting on God because God promised. He promised it, but he's still waiting on you to renew your mind. Got it? If you, if you know your pastor by now, you already know where I'm at next. What's next? See, this is a bad church. This is a bad witness. 
For those of you that are watching cyberly, uh, we've had a glitch in the matrix. Uh, we had a whole brain freeze. So this is why you, this is why you have to have active listening. I started off with faith. I, start, I moved to family. I landed on finance. There's only one thing left. Praise God. Woo. Fitness. Active listening. Faith, family, finance, fitness. That's our pillars of our church. All right. So here we go. Mental fitness. Emotional fitness. Physical fitness. I'm going to run through these three, three real quick. You got to renew your mind to change the mentality by which you operate from. You got to change your mentality about money, about church, about family, about life, about politics, about a number of things. Change your mind. Number two, emotionally. And this is where it's going to hurt. Because there are some people that want an upgrade relationally, but you're not prepared emotionally. When, when is my boy ass coming? Wednesday. Well, when, when, when is Wednesday? That's the day that he gonna come. He not he not he not coming until you get yourself or and and not just he she. He or she not coming until you get your emotions under wrap. You, you, you can't prosper in a new relationship because of how traumatized you are from the old relationship. And until you renew your mind, you're not going to benefit. Because you've suppressed a lot of things. And you have a lot of triggers. And those triggers set you off into a response and a behavior pattern that will send them running. But I don't understand why nobody will stay still in my life and I can't hold on to nobody. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. You got to renew your mind. You can't make it in your career. You done went to nine different jobs. No, no boss you have is right. No, no, it ain't no, it ain't all the bosses. It's you. All right, they may have mishandled you at the first boss, but you've made the second through nine bosses pay for what the first boss did to you. Now, now you can't thrive in any setting because every setting reminds you at some point there's a trigger that takes you back to the first boss. So where you should have been having career advancement in a particular career, uh, you didn't have you didn't been everything. You didn't been the maid. You'd have been the mechanic. You'd have been the chef. You'd have been the administrator. Amen. You, you, you've been everything. Jack of all trades and the master of none. Because you haven't come to certain emotional resolves within yourself concerning how you've been handled in the business place. In your relationships. The last marriage scarred you and messed you up. And the marriage after that messed you up. And now you're looking for the marriage, the next one, and you're still not dealing with you. As we stand to our feet, our time is out. I'm not out of message, but... I went the long way around to the detour route. Thank you. I took the detour route to get us. Did this help anybody? Yes. We got to renew our mind. What got us here is not going to get us there. 